Hello everyone, my name is Jason Boyle and I'm an architect in the UK. And today I'm going to be doing this video where I show you how I've transformed my mid-Victorian terrace, which is three bedrooms and now two bathrooms, into a home for me and my family. Now, terrace houses are often forgotten in the UK, but they offer some real benefits. You are sharing walls with your neighbours, so it cuts out on heating costs. You have lots of original features often, such as fireplaces and cornices and high ceilings. And also there's that ability often to expand into the loft. So I really hope you enjoy this video. And by the way, the house only cost me 125,000 four years ago. The UK is a small island and densely populated in many areas. Therefore land is expensive and we can't all live in large detached properties such as these. However, most homeowners tend to buy semi or detached properties, which can be expensive and the mortgage can take up a large part of your income. So what are the alternatives? Research shows that Victorian terraces are often larger per meter square than new build houses, which are either semi or detached. I live in Rosendale in Lancashire and four years ago I bought this mid Victorian terrace for £125,000. This was the hallway and this is the hallway now contrasting grey and the white and also introducing photographs on the walls and a Moroccan light. This was the dining room. When I stripped back the floor, I noticed it was concrete. I then came up with the idea of putting down an epoxy resin floor. This gives the space an industrial look. The dining room is more of a multifunctional room. It has a large industrial style table, which can be a place to dine, entertain, or even work. The table is large, but is proportional to the room. The house has two fireplaces. When I moved in, both were bricked up. In the dining room, I decided to add a large circular wood burner, which was proportional to the large opening, and I rested the fireplace on a thick stone plinth. Victorian properties have high ceilings and furniture can often feel small within the space. Through research, I found the house used to be a butcher's and meat would be hung from the ceiling. With this in mind, I wanted to use the ceiling to hang a steel structure, which I designed, to serve as a function to hold glasses and wine for dining. The ceiling structure integrates lights, but also gives the space a centerpiece whilst maintaining its industrial feel. This is the view from the living room. The dining and living were originally separated by a brick wall. I wanted the flexibility of maintaining the two rooms as distinctive spaces, but also the ability to flow from one room to another when entertaining. With this in mind, I designed a sliding door with an industrial feel. The past owners of the house had used carpets for flooring, but once removed, I found the property had beautiful floorboards, which I stripped and varnished. I installed a multi-fuel stove into the existing chimney 
and this gave the room the focus it needed. Into one of the alcoves I've had designed a bookcase. The three ceiling lights lined through with the lights in the dining room. And as you can see here, two rooms now become one. We've used the hallway as a picture wall. And directly at the top of the stairs is the bathroom. Now the bathroom is the same size as the kitchen below and as such it is quite a size. So in a space like this the bath has to be big, the shower also has to be a size proportional to the room and likewise the sink. This is the master bedroom. But what is behind this door? Well, behind this door is a walk-in wardrobe. But also, I've included an ensuite shower and sink. I hope you can see the Victorian properties do have a lot to offer. They can be transformed with the help of an architect or an interior designer. Victorian properties can be reimagined and they are great value for money.